Hello and welcome to another video from avforums.com. This time we're going to be looking at the pitch settings we obtained when calibrating the review sample of the Panasonic TX58DX700 4K HDR TV. Now we'll be taking you through three setups briefly. The first of all is the probably the most crucial, which is the standard dynamic range nighttime setup. So we want to press the menu button on the remote control and the best viewing mode on this TV in the lack of, with the lack of ISF or THX modes is True Cinema, which gives the most accurate out of the box results. We had a backlight of 47, which gave about 125 CDM, which is suitable for a nighttime setup. Contrast, we clip back to 90, brightness at defaults, colour at defaults, there's no need for tint. Sharpness, we ped back from the default 30 to 0. Colour temperature warm too, gives you the closest to D65. Vivid colour off. Colour remaster also off. The reversal film effect isn't really applicable to the UK market, so that's generally going to be off. The adaptive backlight control, you can experiment with this. We found minimum was probably the best mixture of contrast performance without too much blooming or uh, flash lighting. Uh, ambient sensor off, otherwise you might get fluctuations in the brightness of the picture. Noise reduction definitely off for your best quality sources. Same with MPEG remaster, same with resolution remaster. Dynamic range remaster definitely off. Here's another one to experiment with, the intelligent frame creation. Um, definitely don't go above min. Um, you might find you want it on minimum for sporting content or fast paced video. Um, we're pretty ambivalent about it to be honest, it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference between minimum and off. Clear motion uses a black frame insertion technique, so that's another one to experiment with. Uh, it definitely doesn't cause any so proper effect, it definitely does reduce the brightness of the panel output, so you will need to adjust the backlight if you do use that. But if you find um, motion is a little bit juddery, then clear motion can be switched on. We'll go into the advanced settings in a moment. Look at the option settings first. This is where you find your game mode and your direct modes. That's the other HDMI. We've turned all these off because we're only watching video. HDMI RGB range, that's normal for your general video content. If you've got a PC type source, then you'll change that to full. Uh, the screen settings. Now we definitely want overscan off. It's greyed out on this because of the source uh, attached, but uh, you'll find that that will be um, switchable on and off on most occasions, so definitely want that off. And that's to copy this adjustment to all the other inputs or your choice of inputs. And we'll head into the advanced settings next. This is where we have our white balance, gamma and colour management controls. Contrast control, we'll have that off definitely for standard dynamic range. Colour gamut for everything but Ultra HD Blu ray, you really want that on Rec 709. And this is where the white balance settings are. Now the DX700 was pretty accurate out of the box, so just a little bit of tweaking needed here. As you can see, you might want to get the pause button and your pen and paper ready because we're going to go through the 10 point adjustments very quickly. And we'll start at 10% stim. There's 20, 30, 40% didn't need anything. So just tiny little adjustments and tweaks. A rule of like gray scale. to 90 and right up to full white. Okay, next we'll be going into the colour management system. Again, very minor tweaks needed here to bring everything into line because it was very accurate out of the box. And any big adjustments here affected the whole gamut negatively. We didn't even have to touch the secondaries. Gamma we had at 
2.3, which gave us a nice 2.35 response, which was great for this TV and a dark environment. Now we're going to quickly take you through the daytime settings. So in terms of daytime settings, there's not really a lot you can do with this TV. And to be fair, they're a bit of a ambiguous uh, lot of settings because everyone's environment's different anyway. So we use the normal mode and we up the backlight to 80, contrast at 92, colour luminance we increase to, um, by 5 to 55 to combat any ambient light. Sharpness, apologies, that should be down at zero. For some reason it hasn't remembered it. There we go. Uh, colour temperature warm too, again there's, there's no reason not to choose D65 as the best option. The Vivid Colour, Colour Remaster, all these as per the nighttime settings. Dr. Backlight Control on minimum. All these extra processing options off, or at least with the motion, maybe min. And there are no advanced settings here. Again, the same option settings as we've just seen, and the same screen settings we've just seen. So then we're going to be taking a look at the HDR setup which um, we'll just need to flip our meter into HDR mode for, just back in a second. Okay, if we press the info button on the Panasonic remote, we can see we're now in HDR mode. Uh, now, one thing before we probably get started is to make sure you can accept an HDR signal. You have to go into the setup menu and then into HDMI HDR setting and have whichever input you want or both HDMI 1 or HDR 2 able to accept the HDR signal. We're on HDMI 1, obviously. Uh, now let's go back into the picture menu. And this will be a very brief setup because most of the things are at defaults, otherwise it really does start messing with the picture. Um, true cinema mode again. Backlight, you have to have over 100, otherwise it really starts messing with the colors. Uh, contrast, we peg back slightly to 90. Brightness at defaults. Color at default. Tint at default. Again, colour temperature of warm 2 for the best, because we're still using D65 even though it's HDR. But I like control again, experiment, but actually you need that on minimum <laughs> to on the HDR content. It doesn't seem to work properly. Again, all the processing controls were mostly got off. Experiment with the motion controls should you wish. Advanced settings here. Contrast, contrast control can be off, off or auto, doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference. We'll just leave it at off. Colour gamut, now it's Rec 2020 for the Ultra HD Blu-rays, that's what you want, it gives you the widest possible colour gamut. Capable on this TV, gamma 2.4, that's not totally applicable to HDR signals, but it does have some effect and we quickly just tidied up the white balance because we had a lot of excess blue and green energy towards white. Uh, colour management we didn't touch. And the option settings go so again where you found your game mode. Screen settings 69 overscan off. Screen display on. And again, should you want to copy any adjustments across to other inputs, well, HDMI 2 in this case, that's the one you want. Okay, that concludes our look at the picture settings for the Panasonic TX58DX700. Remember, you can check out more reviews at avforums.com forward slash reviews. You can see more videos at avforums.com forward slash videos. And you can follow us on Twitter. And you can also like our Facebook page. Thanks for watching.